Hello everyone and welcome to this bonus 10x growth accelerator that's called the Strategy Design Accelerator, which is all about building a strategy around and injecting some acceleration into your personal and professional development and growth projects and into your key goals and your major initiatives that you're looking to really move things forward and really take you to the next level. Your learning and development and your key goals and your major projects, these are key vehicles to your next level of success. And just take a moment to really take that in. Now, my next level is really determined by the learning that I do, the development and growth that I commit to, the key goals that I set and the major projects that I mobilize. So we want to get focused and strategic with all of those. Now, I know some may be thinking, you know, strategic thinking is not something I need in the toolkit. You know, that's for high flying corporate execs. That's for the CEOs of the world. That's for economists. It's anyone with strategist in their title. But let me tell you, we have strategies for everything for our morning routines, back in the car out of the driveway, how we do confidence, and how we run our special projects. And those strategies, they are perfect every single time for the results that they're getting. If you don't like the result, we want to change up the strategy. So strategic thinking is a powerful skill to have in the toolkit. And today, we'll be pointing that skill at your key goals and your major projects. Now, today's session is all about strategy and acceleration. It's those two ideas working in combination because a strategy, that's an important piece. If you don't set your goals, the world will, and it won't be in line with what you are looking to achieve. Without a strategy, you're going to be reactive, sporadic, uncoordinated in your approach. And all of that means that nothing has a chance to really build and compound over time. I mean, it's like going to the gym. The gym definitely works, but it's a longer term game. We need to be committed. We need to be consistent with that. So we need a little bit of strategy and structure around it. And without strategy, you won't be able to maximize your investments of time, money, resources, focus, attention, and energy. Whatever you're looking to achieve, we want to invest in that. And to maximize those investments, we need a strategy. Now, acceleration is also a key ingredient alongside all those good ideas around strategy. Because first of all, success likes speed and it likes a bias for progressive action. We want that acceleration piece always there. Acceleration allows us to capitalize on opportunities and you know, not be stuck in analysis paralysis. And of course, the landscape is always changing. We want to be working on what's relevant right here, right now. So acceleration is a key ingredient to complement everything we're doing in the strategy space. So let's get strategic. So we set our own path, maximize our investments and build and compound over time. And let's accelerate keeping things wholly relevant in the right now, taking progressive action and capitalizing on our opportunities. Now, most people, they don't get strategic with their learning and development, their key goals, their major projects. I mean, we talk about it a lot, but we don't get strategic, we don't get focused. And there are a few key reasons. I mean, first of all, it's just never occurred to people to get strategic, or maybe they're too busy, or it's not worth the effort, it's not a priority. But let's just break some of those down. You know, it's never occurred to them. Well, we're taking care of that right now. We're bringing it fully into awareness how important it is to get strategic with the things that are most important to me. Too busy? Well, being strategic is a net time saver. It will maximize your time and your focus. Imagine having you know, two minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes free in your day with a strategy in place. You can really maximize that time Without a strategy, you're going to be sort of looking around, hunting around for like, well, what do I do now? I'll just go check my email. So getting strategic, it's a net time saver. If we're thinking it's not worth the effort, well, we're going to waste far more without that strategy in place. If we're thinking it's not a priority, what could be more important? But here's one of the key reasons that people don't generally get strategic with their learning, their development, their goals and their projects. They believe they can't get strategic. Well, you can. We just don't want to believe that we can get strategic with the things that we want to move forward. We think strategy, as we said at the start, is the, you know, just the purview of people who are in those corporate roles or, in, or you know, focused at the highest level. No, we can get strategic. So there are a few of the key reasons that might initially hamper thoughts about getting strategic, but those are surface level reasons. You know, the real, maybe deeper level reasons are, first of all, we don't like to believe 
in reducing success to a process because then there's just less place to hide when we fail. We really fear failure. You know, it's a worry for us. So what would that mean about me if I were to fail? What would others think about me? So that's maybe a deeper reason that's going on. We fear the hardship and the struggle. Like it's going to take effort and we're worried about wasted effort and mediocrity. Maybe just put a little pin in those two ideas. You know, wasted effort. Yeah, we really can relate to that sense of like we're moment- we love the momentum. We want to perform. We want to make things happen. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to lose my momentum on this. So I get a little bit fearful of the hardship, the struggle, the effort that's going to be, the journey I'm going to go through. And then after all of that, I'm worried about the mediocrity. Like I go through all this process, I really invest, and then I'm really not that good, or I don't quite achieve what I'm looking for. So those things hold us back. And we also worry that we don't or won't have the discipline and this is a really common thing that my clients bring to me. They say, these ideas are great, Dan. I can't wait to get going. I just don't have the discipline for this. But the mistake that we're making there is we're defining, defining discipline as equal to willpower. And discipline equals systems. That's what I want to change up. And that's what we teach in TSP. Now, those are some of the reasons that might be causing a little bit resistance when it comes to getting strategic. But for those that are willing to lean into some of those uncomfortable feelings and really push past some of the self-limiting thoughts, there is a way to get strategic, time efficient and results focused. And that's what we're going to share in today's session. So please, as always, grab your notebook and pen, take plenty of notes, think about how you're going to really apply this to your key goals in your major projects, and let's get to work. Now, before we get into the detail of our strategy design model, I want to share with you some principles just to have in mind whenever you're looking at a blank slate and you're about to craft your strategy. So let's think a little bit right now about what a strategy is, some of the common mistakes to avoid, and some of the key qualities of a strategy. And then we'll use those discussion points and those ideas, those reflection points to establish some base principles to really underpin our thinking. And the first thing I want to share with you is just to think very you know, at the foundational levels, what is a strategy? So I have a definition for you that I'd love to share, and I'll put it into today's session notes so that you've got it there as a bit of an anchor to think every time you come back to strategy, what do we really mean by strategy? So here's the definition. Strategy for me is an ongoing process of thought and action that's all about creating best possible results tomorrow with the opportunities that are presented today. And to do so in a way that really aligns with vision, values, and purpose. Now, there's a few key ideas to take out of that definition. First of all, it's an ongoing process. This is something that we want to bake in. Secondly, it's all about alignment with vision, values, and purpose. So alongside making this a routine habit, scheduling it on the calendar, I always want to start with the vision and values. I want to have that piece alongside everything else that I'm focused on. I'm going to be thinking about goals and achievement and outcomes and the things that I want to really make happen. I want to make sure I align that with the vision that I'm shooting for and values. That is what is most important to me. So two great questions to take here to make this an ongoing process and to get this element of alignment is to think, first of all, what does ultimate success look like? Really dial into the vision piece. And then secondly, what's most important to me about this? I think at the level of values. The second principle I want to talk a little bit around is off the back of some common mistakes that we want to avoid. The first mistake when we come to designing and crafting a strategy is we end up creating a plan, not a strategy. So I know I'm creating a plan when I'm too much in the detail. So what I want to do here is I want to keep leveling up the thinking. I want to keep challenging myself to think, am I in a plan here or do I need to level up, come up to the level of strategy? And it's a little footnote. If people are thinking, well, what really is the difference between a strategy and a plan? I mean, in language, we can often use those quite interchangeably. Well, a strategy is longer term, it's at the higher level, and it really deals with the deeper reasons and the base principles that we're going to operate under. A plan is more of the detailed how-to. It's shorter term, it's lower level. So you can use those two distinctions to really think about the difference between strategy and plan. There is space and indeed need for both. So keep leveling up the thinking to keep bringing you up to the level of strategy and not getting too much into the detail of a plan. 
Second common mistake to avoid is failing to align with vision and values. We've already talked a little bit about this, having that sense of outcome and goals and requirements. Those things are just going to happen. You're going to naturally gravitate your thinking towards those. What we want to do alongside that is really have the vision and values. What many people can do is they forget the why. So here the rule is simply to ask, you know, so what? Why is this important? Why do we care? Continually ask, what's my why here? And the third common mistake for us to avoid is that we create unworkable, unsustainable strategies that just don't exist in the real world. They don't ever relate to the day to day. Now, we've talked in previous 10x growth accelerators, and I talk about a lot inside the academy of how high potential, high performing people can be prone to getting unrealistically ambitious in the execution plan. So here we want to have the habit of keeping things at the highest level when we're thinking strategy, but every now and again, just dipping into the day-to-day and really relating it to how's this gonna work at the ground level? Think about boots on the ground. I mean, what's gonna really happen? What's gonna really be needed here to make this thing work? So finding that sort of dualistic balance between the highest level strategy and relating it to the, t- to the day-to-day. And the third key principle I want to talk a little bit around is just thinking about the key qualities of a strategy. And for me, there are three. There's going to be many elements that we talk about today, but here are the three key qualities of a strategy. Focus, alignment, and agility. Perhaps you want to jot those three down. So first of all, focus. We want to think about where we want to focus, but also where we are not going to focus, where we are not going to compete. Every time you come up with a strategy, think about the scope. Here's where we're going to play, and here is where we're not going to play. Here's where we're going to leave alone. This is what we're going to put to one side. Be very intentional about that. Second key quality is alignment. I want to be aligned with vision and values. We've talked plenty about this, but never forget that sense of the vision. What's the ultimate success? What does that look like? And the values, what's most important to me about this? And then our third key quality is agility. This is about the ability to flex and evolve. And I particularly like the idea of evolution because it really encompasses the balance that we want to strike between being willing to create and make a change when needed, but not just dropping everything at the slightest hitch. I mean, think of any company that you admire, the things that they're achieving. They have a strategy. Now, when they come up against an impasse or some challenge or it's not quite going right, they might do a bit of a review and at key cadence points, they might make a change. But they won't just drop what they're doing at the slightest problem, the slightest hitch, the slightest bump in the road. Strategy is something we commit to over the longer term. So some key ideas to take forward here is, first of all, paying as much attention where not to compete as where to compete. And secondly, incorporating a real willingness to evolve and finding that balance between um, a willingness to make a change, but not dropping everything at the slightest bump. So a few key ideas there to really underpin our thinking. Let me summarize them for you now. Making this, first of all, an ongoing process. Bake this into your routine. Make strategic thinking a real habit. Secondly, never overlooking alignment with vision and values. What does success look like? What's most important to me about that? How am I aligned? Thirdly, continually leveling up the thinking. Not being stuck in the detail of a plan, but coming back up to the strategic level. But then alongside that, idea number four, continually relating back to the day to day, making sure that this is based in reality and not completely unsustainable. Fifth key idea I want you to carry forward, making powerful decisions on where not to compete. And six, a willingness to evolve, never overly attaching to some of the ideas that come up. We wanna be able to evolve and finding the balance between making changes where necessary, but not hanging on and not dropping everything the moment that something feels like um, it's a bit of a challenge. So take a moment to take those in, have these be some points of learning you really embed, brain tattoos if you like, just little habits that you carry into your strategic planning sessions. And when we come back, we're gonna step through our model. So welcome back. And what I'd like to do now is introduce you to a model that you can use for any strategy design that you find yourself needing to step through. And what you'll find with this model is it's versatile. It's focused on the most important elements of strategy design, and it's nicely broken down. So it's entirely consumable and entirely doable 
even if you're completely new to strategic level thinking, I promise you, you're going to be able to do this. So let me walk you through the model now. And I invite you just to download the accompany and workbook that you'll find in today's session and session notes. The PDF there, it lays out everything for you. It'll make it just a little easier to orientate through all of the um, all of the various pieces and just think about how to apply it. And after our walkthrough today, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to run through a few case study examples so you can really see how this applies out there in the real world, helping you to achieve your next level of success. So make sure you stick around to the very end of today's session for those case study examples. Now, our model has three major elements to it. You'll see them in the workbook if you're just following along right now and you've got a notebook to hand, maybe jot these three words down. So element number one, foundations. Element number two, requirements. And element number three, design. Now, foundations is going to be all about looking at outcomes, but also that important element that we've talked about today of alignment. Our second major element, requirements, is really getting into the sort of the core essentials, the bedrock requirements, but also thinking a little bit about the secret source that we want to put into our strategy to really make it come alive. And then the third piece is design. That's all about the approach, but also setting up the ecosystem in which our projects, our goals, our learning and development are going to move forward. So what we'll do is, first of all, we'll establish the foundations by considering what success look like, looks like, the benefits of those successes as well, and pairing those together, whilst aligning our outcomes with our values and all the, you know, all the other projects that you're going to be running right now. Then what we'll do is we'll break down the requirement, including what isn't in scope. And we'll also think a little bit about where the competitive edge might come from for you and what might create an unfair advantage and otherwise bring our strategies really to life. And then we'll finish with some design work that will look at um, you know, maximizing strengths and minimizing weaknesses, as well as just to create the ecosystem that really sets us up for success. Alongside the model, we'll also introduce a few principles for acceleration. So, you know, let's make sure that we stay nimble with all of this. I don't want you so much in the analysis paralysis zone that we never get out of the starting blocks. So we definitely want to make it a theme today that we want to work quickly through our model, use the process, use the PDF to take you through that, and then let's get into action. So part one of the model is all about foundations. And again, if you want to follow along, please download the workbook so that you can see how everything fits together. Now, it's all too easy to launch into something prematurely. The enthusiasm is great. We want to keep some of that. We want the hunger, the desire. We want to get into action. But we want to just check ourselves a little bit because we can miss opportunities at the outset. We can overlook issues and we can end up with something that we didn't even want. I mean, have you ever launched into something, really got things going, and then just thinking, I wish I'd taken a beat here because I'm not sure we're on the right path. I'm not sure we're even going for the thing that I actually want when, we're, when we finish this project. So let's really begin with the end in mind. Let's begin with outcomes. And I want to ask you, what does success look like? And how will you know you've been successful? Now, when you step through this part of the process, spend a little bit of time here thinking about outcomes and the final result. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What's true that maybe isn't true before? How will you know you've been successful? And better yet, how will someone else know? How would I know you've been successful? What are the measures of success? What are our success criteria? So this is all about outcomes. Now, alongside that, we also want to think about benefits. Why is this good? What will it lead to? What does it generate that maybe wasn't there before? So we have outcomes, the, the actual result that we create, but then the benefits from that. Why is it good? What does it lead to? What does it give us that we didn't have before? The next piece then is alignment. Okay, so I invite you just to think a little bit about your values beneath this project. Values are the things that are most important to us. Honesty, integrity, um, con contribution, commitment, all these kind of different ideas that are things that are really important to us at different levels. Some of those are global macro values, some of those are very personal to us, and they exist beneath the things we're working on. Whenever I have a client come to me and they say, I really want to achieve these goals, they're just not happening for me. What goes off in my mind is like, hmm, values conflict. And then there's other times where clients come to me and they say, listen, I, I doesn't even feel like work. I'm absolutely smashing my goals, 150, 200%. And it's just no problem at all. I'm free flowing. I'm making these things happen. And what goes on in my mind is, ah, values alignment. So we really want to tap into what are the values beneath this project. So make sure you ask yourself, what's most important to me about this? 
Is it the impact? Is it contribution? Is it something about relationships? Is it an element of wealth? What's going on for you? What's most important to you about this? How can I align with those values? So this is also a good stage, this foundational stage, to begin thinking about the ecology of your project. Now, ecology means how everything fits within the system, and it's very useful to check in on this. That idea that I mentioned earlier, prematurely launching into something and thinking, I wish I'd taken a beat because it doesn't quite fit. So a great question I want to give you here is, if I had it, would I want it? Okay, if I had it, would I want it? I give that question to so many of my clients, and they say, well, of course I do. I'm here telling you about these, the goals that I want. But take some time on this. Well, do I want to go through all of this effort and then end up with something and then realize, you know what, I didn't want that. And that can be a great question to ask when you've looked at outcomes, when you've thought about the benefits and when you've thought about values. So if I had it, would I want it? What will this lead to? Do I want that? Will this conflict with my other goals? Will it conflict with my current setup or indeed my future setup? Maybe it's going to be a contradiction to where I'm actually going. Does this outcome preserve existing benefits? When don't I want the outcomes from this and the benefits from this project? Um, what else will achieving this goal affect? What is the cost of achieving this goal? Is it worth it? That's a great question to come to. Is it worth it? So there, I've given you a few questions. You'll find them in the workbook. You're going to find them on the session notes from today's uh, 10x Growth Accelerator. Those are some key questions to ask to really get into the ecology, to really figure out whether what I'm focusing on and what I'm spending my precious time, energy, attention on, whether it fits within the entire system. So that was part one of the model, foundations, getting crystal clear on the outcomes, reflecting on the benefits of those outcomes, ensuring you've got values alignment, and just performing an ecology check. And that last piece is a very useful activity to step through continually at intervals throughout. As, you know, as you're working through your strategy design or any project that you're looking at, always just give yourself an opportunity to check in on the ecology. Does this still fit? Is this still in alignment with everything else that's going on for me? Okay, so that was part number one uh, of the model at Foundations. Let's move on to part number two, requirements. Now, the second part of our model is all about requirements. Spending time thinking about the key requirements is such an effective use of time and will invariably lead to better results. But let me tell you, we so often overlook this, just assuming we know what's required. And that happens because it's either a combination of, you know, done it before, or I know how to do this, or making a lot of assumptions, or it might be the limitations of language that can really mask the subtleties of a situation or a project. Sometimes we language things that really gloss over what's really required and then we don't think to dig into the requirements. We make those assumptions and we overlook this important step. So I just want you to have this brain tattoo. Just have this as a rule. Have this as something that's just part of your performance DNA. I always just take a beat and think, what are the requirements here? So it's always worth asking, what's the true requirement? And when you think about the pain points that might be um, the, the aim of this project, because we want to remove those, and think about opportunities, because we want to capitalize on those. So what's the true requirement here? Think about pain points, think about opportunities. Now with requirements, what I'd love you to do is split them into two big areas. And the first is to begin with the core essentials. These are going to be the hygiene factors and the bedrock requirements. What's the absolute essential here? Imagine it's a product in a particular uh, field. Every product will satisfy the, the same hygiene factors. They'll all do basically the same thing. If you look at you know, a remote control for a TV, they'll all have essentially some hygiene factors, which if they didn't have them, that product just wouldn't even exist. It wouldn't even be in the run and it wouldn't be in the competition. Those are the absolute bedrock requirements and you'll find them in your learning and development. You'll find them in your key goals. You'll find them in your major projects. What are the hygiene factors? What are the core essentials, the absolute fundamentals? Now, the second big area is the secret source. So this is about what else is required for your competitive edge. 
What would give you an unfair advantage? You're learning and uh, developing, let's say, a new skill. You have got a goal that you're working on. You've got a project that you're running. You've got a business that you're starting. You've got a promotion that you want to hit. You've got um, some relationships you want to deepen. You've got skills you want to develop. What would give you an unfair advantage in this area? Let's say, imagine for a moment you want to work on your public speaking and you spend a little bit of time getting some clarity about the outcomes you're looking for and the benefits of that. And then we start to think about the requirements. Well, there's some very basic requirements, but then we want to add like some, you know, some competitive edge, some secret source that really gives us the unfair advantage. Most other people are just going to read a few books and say, yeah, okay, I've understood a few key elements. Maybe they'll go on a course, but what would the secret source be here? It would be, let's say, practice opportunities. I'm going to you know, practice in work, in the real world, in public, five times every single week. That's once a day. Okay, I'm going to build a confidence meditation. So I really build a strong confidence and have a really good pregame ritual that takes me into the right zone before I do my public speaking. That's going to give me an unfair advantage. I'm going to learn about storytelling. It's a little bit of a tangential skill, but it's really going to play into my ability to become a great public speaker. This is what we're talking about, about finding competitive edge from secret source, finding a way to get an unfair advantage. There's a great story that you might have heard about Frank Sinatra, who when he was coming up, he was competing with all sorts of other crooners, all sorts of other singers. And what he was doing is he was going to the local swimming pool and doing length after length after length to improve his health, his fitness and his lung capacity so he could hold notes a little bit longer he knew band leaders were going to be interested in who could who had that that little something extra and one of the unfair advantages that frank found was to be able to hold a note for longer because he'd spent so much time in the swimming pool really building up his uh, his lung capacity so let's think about the core essentials but let's not forget the secret source